Yo guys, what is going on? I'm coming at you today with what I would say are my picks for the top 5 best decks in the 1.5 meta. Now first of all, this is purely my opinion. Um, I'm just going based off of what I've seen and tournament results and what I think are, you know, the contenders, the top contenders for this meta. And while I am putting these decks in a specific order, the note that the margin between these decks, in my opinion, is very small and there is a reasonable chance for any of these decks to be considered the best or for any of these decks to win. It is based off of matchups as well as, you know, the play themselves so I think any of these decks are competitive and have a very viable chance of topping tournaments um, so with that let's go ahead and get into what I would say is my number five pick and that would be Imperial Dramon Blue this deck is very very aggressive and basically wants to spam the board with jammers like Imperial Dramon, Pyle Dramon, and Dino Beemon. And when you pair these guys with something like Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode, who lets you unsuspend everything with jamming, um, that just <laughs> that just facilitates so many shenanigans with Pyle Dramon. You get to basically attack multiple times in a single turn. With Dino Beemon, you get to run over. You know you can possibly bait out any um, blocks by your opponent and run over basically any level 4 blocker in the game um, just the piercing plus jamming is super super strong that also facilitates you know mixed blue and green builds um, with things like Davis and just a super powerful um, aggressive deck now the reason I don't think this deck is necessarily the best is because of its matchups and it kind of um, if you're able to deal with Imperial Dramon if you're able to outplay them um, then it is really hard for this purely offensive deck um, to, to, you know, kind of counterattack that. If you're playing something like Omnimon Red, or uh, where, you know, you can be just as aggressive as they are, um, plus you have removal, and that's another issue with this deck. It doesn't really play removal. Most people don't, um, you know, play Kokaitis Breath, and that's not really a super good removal card to begin with. Um, and then if you're playing something like Series Mon, which just has a basically good matchup against anything, and you can arrest all your opponent's Digimon and run over them before they have a chance to go into Imperial Dramon, um, that can definitely hinder you. Now the next deck I wanted to talk about um, that I would put at probably the number four spot but this could be argued to be potentially the best deck depending on who's piloting it but I am talking about Rookie Rush guys. There's so many um, good things going for this deck and I, I have a bunch of cards here and a lot of these are new to the 1.5 format. And first of all, I want to talk about Davis Motomiya. Davis is so good because the potential plus two anytime you play him, and then it guarantees you three memory every single turn, so your opponent can't memory lock you. And this deck was in, you know, 1.0. You were already playing, like, mixed blue-green cards. You have Puppet Mon, and you can play things like Flower Cannon, um, Hammer Spark, and just <laughs> lots of very powerful option cards. But now that you have Davis, you can also plus off of things like Arurumon, who is a two cost rookie with 5,000 DP and yes she is a two to Digivolve but you will never Digivolve this card. The 5,000 is super super powerful and do I even have to mention the jamming Vmon? This card is probably the single handed like best rookie in the game just because you pair this with something like Upamon or Demi Vmon you'll always get the draw plus the jamming and then you can always make him active with something like X Vmon. So not only does X Vmon work with you know the jamming Vmon but it actually just works with any level four lower so it can work with your Rurumon or just anything. Being able to save your rookies for the next turn and, you know, avoid attacks is just super, super powerful. Plus, you're, of course, playing things like Puppetmon, and then you've got cards like We Stop Fighting. Uh, we have to stop fighting, so, you know, basically giving everything on your board jamming and potentially, you know, protecting them for the next turn. Um, and, you know, who cares uh, if your opponent's Digimon can't die in battle? You're really just attacking their security. So this is a very, very aggressive deck. And I honestly think it, like, it's just... If you don't respect it, if you're not ready for it, it can severely outpace a lot of the meta decks. So I think Rookie Rush is like a legitimate contender to being like, it's so annoying to play against, man. I don't like playing against this deck, but it, you have to respect it. This is a good, good deck.
Now the next deck I have here is my personal favorite. This is Shine Greymon. This deck has a super high ceiling and it is a more of a control deck uh, as opposed to the last two which were purely offensive and I think that might be one reason why it has an edge. Um, mainly because this deck, while it does take a while to set up, you do have access to so much removal in the form of Shine Greymon. He's a super, super powerful boss monster that has the potential to just clear fields, uh, clear your opponent's field, and just get rid of multiple Digimon at once. Plus, you can always get advantage off of things like Patamon gaining memory, as well as Labramon. So, Shine Greymon is super powerful. Pair that with something like Rise Greymon, which unloads all of your yellow Tamer hand, um, Tamer cards from your hand for free. And you have a recipe for disaster. You've also got very powerful Tamers like TK uh, Takaishi, which lets you search through your security and get recovery plus one if you added a yellow card off of its effect. And you just have so many ways to naturally build up to your boss monsters um, and facilitating uh, his effect all the while. And you've also got things like Slash Anjumon, who, you know, if you don't happen to draw into your Shine Greymon, you've also got a minus 8,000 uh, on Digivolution effect, which can take care of basically any level 5 in the game. So I think once you have an established Shine Greymon board, you know, once you resolve this guy and you've got a couple tamers um, and maybe you get a draw off of Labramon or something, it is very, very difficult to stop this deck from stealing rolling and that's why I put it in the spot I did it is arguably um, a very very powerful against most matchups it honestly doesn't have a bad matchup I would say unless you're playing against series mon green or any sort of green variant where they're just resting um, you know your own cards uh, and preventing you from going into shine altogether that's kind of how you counter this deck and that's kind of the downside as well is that you you can only play four copies of this card and this deck pre bt4 is very very reliant on shine greymon and if you don't draw him yes you do have slash anjmon yes maybe you're running things like kentorismon or serafimon but it's really just not as good as this card is single-handedly so the potential to clear level sixes level sevens and just whole boards makes this deck super super powerful um, but the time it takes to build up as well as its weaknesses kind of limits it from being what I would consider like blatantly just the most powerful, but it is definitely still a tier one deck in my opinion. All right, so for the number two spot, I have Omnimon Red. Now, this is basically an updated version of how people were running Omnimon Red in the 1.0 format, where you're essentially just running a vanilla deck with things like Dark Tyranimon. We finally have access to Lava Garidamon, who is another two-cost evolution ultimate so now you can just play straight vanillas as well as you know things like phoenix mon because basically what you're trying to do is just build up into your very powerful level sevens we already have omnimon who is still an absurd card being able to potentially clear multiple digimon with the same name as well as attack multiple times and potentially multiple security checks off of each attacks if you do have something like started at greymon underneath them but then you also have this absolute monstrosity of a card Omnimon Alter S. Alter S has the potential, again, kind of like Shine Greymon, to clear whole fields. The effect to de-digivolve everything on your opponent's side of the field gets rid of a lot of problematic cards that, you know, maybe have on deletion effects or have some layer protection, things like Craniumon um, or something like that. But the de-digivolve mechanic is already a strong mechanic, but then also being able to kill everything 5,000 lower encompasses a lot of things in the level 4 range and basically everything that's level 3, of course. Um, but yeah, and not only that, you know, you get to make him unblockable uh, when you're attacking, so that's pretty sweet. So pair Alter S with an already established, like, tier 1 deck, and this just is a recipe for a very, very powerful and pretty simple deck. Like you're, like I said, you're just basically playing Vanillas and then going to Omni Omnimon, but then you also have something like Blitz Greymon, which is a... 12,000 piercer, which again abuses that D Digivolve mechanic that I talked about with Alter S. So potentially going into, you know, three D Digivolves on a single Digimon uh, with these two guys, and then the piercing is super nice. Um, maybe a little bit unexpected for a red deck, but uh, powerful nonetheless. And then of course, you've got access to basically the most powerful removal card in the game, which is Gaia Force. So um, all of these things, I think, make this deck uh, very powerful offensively and very memory efficient because you are playing so many low-cost evolution cards and I think that's what makes it 
arguably, arguably the second best deck, maybe the best deck, depending on who you ask, um, but that's just, again, my opinion. Alright, so then for my number one spot, what I think is the best deck in the 1.5 format, I am talking about Series Mon Green. Now, we have seen time and time again why green decks are on the rise, and by looking at the BT4 and 5 meta, we see just how absolutely absurd green as a color is, but then not only that, but the Digisorption mechanic as well. We've seen things like Argomon level 5 go to 1, as well as Hidden Potential Discovery. And all of these things make this color and this deck so, so powerful. Series Mon is a Digisorption 3 card, so you're effectively using a level uh, a level 6 that is a 2 to Digivolve. Not only that, you get to abuse the Digisorption um, effect by resting your opponent's Digimon. So that's once per turn per copy of Series Mon, but again, Series Mon isn't very difficult to get out, especially when you're playing essentially a free package of level 5s. The Digisorption mechanic basically lets you circumvent the whole cost for um, digivolving into an ultimate. So being able to climb the ladder super fast with Argomon and Blossomon, yes, we only have one copy of Argomon, but we still have four copies of Blossomon. So being able to abuse that with Seriesmon is just so, so powerful. And do I even need to talk about Hidden Potential Discover? At one, I think this card is fine. I don't think it's absurdly ridiculous, but I still think this card is definitely worth mentioning. The fact that you get to cheat five memory just by suspending one of your puns Digimon makes it so that hey you can go into Mega Gargamon for free you can go into Seriesmon without resting it you can even go into something like Imperial Dramon um, either the like the vaccine or the virus um, for zero cost and that's kind of why I am putting this deck at the highest um, on the list because it can do a lot of the things the other decks do. It can play Omnimon. Like, if you've seen the Omnimon green version where you're running Imperial Dramon, you can just basically run Imperial Dramon, um, hard Digivolve him for 5, but you're basically cheating 3 memory anyways because you're going into something like Blossomon or Argomon, so you can do the shenanigans that Imperial Dramon does with Dino B and with Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode, and then you can even play something like Omnimon if you want. So I think the ability to just control your opponent's board with series mon um speed up your deck with something like mimi which allows you to essentially get another you know breeding phase and then you know speed it up with things like argomon and blossomon and not only that but then you have a natural hard counter to like every other deck in the form of boncho stingmon boncho stingmon if you resolve this card you're winning the game like this card is so so crazy counters imperial dramon counters omnimon this card like instills the fear of god into you <laughs> like you need to watch out for this card bro like this card's ridiculous so all of these factors i think just makes the series mon very very fast and very aggressive but all at the same time you can play that control game and i honestly don't really think it has a bad matchup I mean, you could argue maybe the worst matchup is like rookie rush because that is also a very fast deck and it just puts pressure um very quickly um, so I don't, I don't know. You guys can let me know what you guys think of, of my list and my placings of all of these decks and, uh, which one is your favorite deck out of all these. Now, there were a couple of others I didn't mention, um, like these ones over here, like Craniumon, Ragnalord, All Force. Not to say these decks are bad in any way, but I think the ones I mentioned were just a little bit better and, um, but they are still definitely competitive. You could definitely go to an event playing All Force or Ragnalord and expect to top. Like, these decks are, are no slow. And that's why I was saying the the margin between what I would essentially call maybe tier one and tier two is very small. And basically, the moral of the story is, guys, you should play whatever decks you like, whatever decks you are looking forward to, and that you find fun. So, guys, that is going to be the video. Let me know what you guys did think of this um, in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.